It's great to be here today with John Chen, BlackBerry CEO. What a what a treat. Hi, John. Great to see you. Nice seeing you too. Thank you. Can't wait to talk today about <laughs> you and how you created this culture of love at BlackBerry. Wow. At becoming a most loved workplace. Tell me more about how you did it. How how, how do you create you know, and lead a culture that employees love? Well, um, I think the most important thing is to make sure that you have a view of the culture you want to build up. You communicate to that. Not everybody, by the way, would agree with your view and all, all, all value the same way you valued it. So um, and throughout the process of communication and working with, you know, the the troops and working with the management team and and, and be consistent. A lot of time, you know, when you say, well, we care about a community, you got to you got to be consistent caring about a community. If there is a natural disasters, what will our reaction be? You know, I, I you know, I, we think about, you know, putting the money where your mouth is. Um, you cannot just create a culture on a piece of paper and say that is really great culture. You, you have to practice it. And 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 it and. It, it comes from all big things and small things, not just small. Uh, and, and so um, so one other thing to do is to define the culture you like and, and, and communicate it. Um, not so much. And a lot of people will tell you that, oh, you will listen to the feedback and all that. You know, a culture is almost like a character of a person. You can't really, if I tell you, hey, I want to be honest, and then you said, well, have you really thought about it? You know, you know, and, and I said, oh no, no, okay, then I'll think about it. I'm not, I'm not going to be that honest anymore. You know, I mean, it, it's, it, you have to, you, you define what it is, and and you stick with it, and you practiced it, um, and and that's that's how we go about doing it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to stop for, so that we could be more interactive. Um, I'll let you dive into the direction you like to dive into because it's such a broad interesting and and also not very structured conversation is it is topic is huge and 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 it's important but it's not structured um so anyway i'll it stop is, it is a huge it really is a huge topic area and there's so much that goes along with it behavior expectations goals, aspirations, uh, vision. Uh, there's, and, and especially with the construct of Most Love Workplace, we look at, well, how do people collaborate? How do they create and innovate in difficult times and in times of thriving? For that matter, you know, how do we establish respect as a cultural norm? And uh, so th those are really essential elements of any great workplace culture. Yeah, um, how to pick, so culture is, it's broad, so how to pick what it is and so-called, you know, people like to use KPI, how you measure it, um, what is too much, what is not enough, um, it's, a, it's an exercise on an ongoing care and feeding exercise. A lot of time you have to adjust somewhat. And then, of course, you also need to adjust, um, you know, a different word using the pun, culturally. Um, there are very diverse, diverse workforce, um, it, both in you know, gender, age, and locations, and, and countries. Um, and you've got to make sure that there's some underlying culture of honesty and integrity um, and but then you have to adjust to some of those, you know, demographics differences. Um, and and so it's not an easy. It's it's a it's it's um, it's a lot of work. Uh, and and um, and and circumstances always come up to test you about those work. Um, uh, anyway, um, so we we pick some very basic, um, you know. One of the big thing about other than those, what we call a table stake. You know, obviously, you, you don't have a company if you, if you uh, or at least a worthwhile company if you have no honesty, 
integrity, um, accountability as as your basic foundation. I, I'm talking, you and I are talking probably a little bit beyond that, you know, about that. Um, so we said we care about the employees. You know, how do you exhibit what you what about you caring about the employees? And um, and so um, so we we build a program starting from training to benefits to ability for you to, you to speak up uh, anonymously or or non anonymously um, you know not not making a a environment that is overly open uh, so people could criticize everything from the color of the wall and so forth but 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 really honing into the important things uh, that is happening um, uh, being able to be very transparent and open with our with our troops, um, trusting them not to take the company proprietary information and and put it on social social media, for example. Um, and so that's always a balance. Uh, but but we knock on wood, we we've been pretty good in the last decade, or, or I've been here eight years we've been doing pretty good in, in that balancing act. One of the things that I see in companies today is how do they converge or co-create their products and what they do strategically with how they live inside their culture. So uh -huh. if I were to sort of extrapolate with BlackBerry, you know, you're exceptional at security and you've made incredible pivots to become successful and focusing on security. And I think about you sort of what you said about, you know, keeping it inside of BlackBerry, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you know uh, well, and you have extreme expertise and technical knowledge inside of BlackBerry that would keep a Snowden situation from happening, right? <laughs> so it's, uh, you think about culture, it, that's part of the culture is that right wouldn't you say is that this kind of knowledge that we are truly uh you know experts in in how we uh, secure knowledge and how we share it with each other and manage it for that matter on the top level uh we call ourselves there's a mission in what we do and then what, what is the mission right the, the, the mission what we do is to secure everybody's life. Um, and if you look at our offerings and our, our know-how and what we do well, it's always about you know, security, about protection, about safety, uh, and, and about alerting crisis or managing crisis. So if you look at, you know, and then that could maps into every product that we build and sell. Um, and, and that's, that's the kind of the mission of how we're going to change, change how people live. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm not doing any commercial, but, you know, just one data point, for example, um, we build safety component for automobile, uh, especially the autonomous driven cars and the so-called connected cars. I mean, today's. The car basically, the automobile is a it's 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 a set of microprocessors and it's a, it's a software architecture and and they make decision whether it's AI based or whatever they 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 do what they do they make decision they interact with other cars and they interact with other uh, uh, you know smart city component like traffic lights and, and satellites and and whatnot through that process somebody needs to secure the data and making sure the hacking system the hackers doesn't come in and and create you know intrusion uh, and then basically you know compromise the safety physical safeties of people and 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 property and so blackberry has if you look at everything we do, when we do a lot of things, um, you know, be anywhere from ransomware to embedded into cars, we have 195 million cars today using our software embedded. And a lot of them are on safety certification, meaning that we, we control your safety components of the car. 
lane changes and you know communications and all that. Um, so that's that's a that's a big part of the culture. The culture is what are you doing, you know, for the society. Uh, if you recall, BlackBerry started. This is before my time, as one of the major cell phone, mobile phone company, and and that mandate was to okay was to change the way people work. Okay, you could not only work from your desk, which are use the old mainframe and a whole bunch of terminals and you have to connect it to the terminals physically by wires. Um, then you have to sit there with modem, which is running the slowest speed on earth and you sit at home and doing all that. We went and took all that into a wireless communica communication platform. And so you could be sitting on a beach, you could, you know, having picnic with your kids, but you could still work. Um, and, and so those are the, those, those were the, um, the, the beginning of, of a major part of the company. And so now we have transitioned ourselves to more safety, cyber, so cyber protections, and, and and again, is how we change the society, how we change the world. We know smart city is real. It's real. It's going to come. You know whether whether you and I will enjoy it fully or not, we don't know. But I bet you will. But probably less me. But but we wanted to make sure that we build infrastructure that is safe and controllable, and doesn't really you know compromise the privacy. Of things, um, you know, where hospital cannot be, the data in the hospital, which I'll have all the patients' data, you know, needs to be protected. For example, and we do those kind of things, and for the government, for armed forces, and uh, so forth, so forth. So that that's what we do. Then, on top of that, now it's easier for me now because we we only mostly do our software business. We already made ourselves, for example socially responsible, we made ourselves uh, carbon neutral already in 2020, well, last year, 2021, we, ach we achieved carbon neutrality. We were one of the early ones that, you know, get with with the UN mandate and, and you know, turn ourselves into carbon neutral and, and do a whole bunch of other things anywhere to deal with forestry, uh, building, you know, growing more trees to cleaning the water. Uh, and so we're, we're, our technology is applied to a lot of these areas. And sometimes it's not only technology, it's financial support. Uh, so anyway, so I could go on. So I'll stop right there. And, that, and that's the fabric of your company is this innovation for, for security now. And you also you innovated this entire process that we all enjoy now. It's just bringing our our work uh, outside. I say enjoy or not enjoy outside of our uh, of our offices, and you really created that. And, yeah. You know, before anybody, and I remember having my BlackBerry uh, yeah. and uh, bringing it everywhere. And and it, what was interesting about it, and I I'm assuming this probably still has a place in your culture, is that it I had I was part of that culture, the BlackBerry culture, being a uh, being a user of BlackBerry. the consumer and employee culture, I think was fairly well aligned at that point in time. Is that something that you see too? Is, is that kind of security alignment now, as, as now that you've shifted to that same kind of security alignment of culture as you did when you innovated the field? Yes. What we're doing um, is to cyber protect um, what consumer actually employ and touch. I, I use a lot of example about the car. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it will go beyond the car, you know, medical equipments and drones and, and you know, different smart city component. Uh, so we, we're trying to communicate, secure all the communication among devices and, 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 and infrastructures. Uh, uh, so we will then now be a silent protector for our, all the consumer who you you know who gets on a train or a, a boat or you know or, or, or get in a car that's self driven or get in a car that's connected to to the internet and in driving that way and you know and all your healthcare uh, facilities or, or the devices of the health healthcare devices like infusion pumps and all that this is what we do now um, what, what we do is beyond just 
you actively using a BlackBerry in the, day, the days of CrackBerry, so to speak, um, and, and that communication and that protection is now extended to your home and your office and the hospital you visit and, and, and your car, the car that transport you around. And it extends. And I think of all of the people now or the hackers now who are trying to find vulnerabilities and they'll just to get on the news and they'll send in their they'll put it on the get just that, you know, their 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 hack on the get. Do you have a culture at BlackBerry where they're they're excited about getting involved in hacking and discovering vulnerabilities? Is that part of your culture? And how does yeah, that part of the, in order to do what we just said we want to do, which is we're going to secure, do the best side we can to secure everything you touch us in the life around you and your data. In order to do that, we need to understand and have full knowledge of how hacking works. Um, so we do have threat hunting um, organization in inside company. Uh, we so we, we just to make the world safe. Uh, we and you know we do analysis of trillions of files and that word trillion. I was once I thought when I first used it in our own you know internal document. I thought, well, that's a little exaggeration. I mean, that's like trillions. So trillions a lot, you know. Um, and and so, but it turns out the experience we built up in the last twenty five years actually come close to trillion files. <laughs> So that, that we have scanned and gone through and, and looked at and so forth. Um, and so our knowledge that we build up of what threats looks like, or what, how it was hidden, how it comes into an organization, we have a lot of those uh, experience. So we not only threat hunted, we prevent it from a ransomware point of view. Um, and we do what white hat hacking, meaning we could offer ability to I'll come into your organization and hack you for for the constructive reason to see how vulnerable you are for example so we do all we do all that now yes we do it's exciting and and that's what really makes a, a cool culture and you think about the way that that interacts with other companies who are doing similar things in the value chain not necessarily competitive things but similar in the value chain I think of um, here, Shukla, who's the CEO of Automation Anywhere, he's another most loved workplace. And there's such a synergy between the two of you because he automates and in everything and in, in, uh, in, at work, at home, any, anywhere that requires automation, even uh, into robotics. And everything is hackable at every stage yeah. as we move on to that. And, and even with the concept of singularity, you have a huge part in that. In ensuring that it's not hackable, it's not it's not too human, if you will. <laughs> that you know, yeah. we go beyond the humanity. Of it. We we are able to enable. To, we're able to allow for uh, automation and uh, being brought from here to there to be very secure, and that's right. such an important part of the culture. It is. It is. It is a big part of our culture. Uh, again, the culture goes back to the employee loves it because we're making a difference. We're making a difference on, you know, how the world automate. You know, kind of like without us, you know, these things might not be trusted. Um, so that that's kind of motivating for for us. Um, so we want to make sure that all the infusion pump in a hospital is is completely managed and protected. Um, and so it, it, that was our important thing. So the patients and the doctors could go on and do what they need to do um, and to save lives. So, so yes, those, those are motivating for a lot of our people. Yes. Outstanding. And, and, and it goes back to what you were saying before. In the, in the beginning, you were saying, you know, let, let's not complain about everything. Let's stay on the positive. And because you have a really important mission and, you know, we, we can't just be complaining about everything. We have to focus on the positive, focus on our trajectory so we can be successful to save people's lives, to ensure automation, to make sure we get from here to there in automated cars properly. And that that that's a very uh, it, it brings people together as a result of that that uh, common mission, which is exciting. It, you know, what, what would you say, you know, 
things that as you lead uh, your team, executive team and board, your just the way that you've you've led um, in the past, what would you say for you personally, who for John, what would you say is like a really important thing that you've always um, believed in philosophically how you lead? What's that one thing that, that you how can... how if it's something how we lead yes. as a person? Yes. I I I always thought the most important thing, and even if I if we're having talking about even if we're sitting here and talking about management science, um I always believe the most important thing that makes a difference to in a leader is about fairness. And fairness is the hardest things on earth to deliver because what fair to you might not be fair to your coworker. And so in order to sit here and administrate that fairness, um, if you could always remind ourselves to do that, that makes a, a really good leader. That's my opinion. And, and, and the reason is it's very simple. Um, People could deal with a lot of adversity or hardship or negative if they believe they are treated fairly. People cannot handle it. You know, if I give you ten dollars and I give the next person a thousand, and there is no rhyme or reason for it, you both do the same job. You start. You. It's not the, you know, the dollars, the delta differences. Is is the is the meaning that is right this behind it? Um, so that doesn't mean you don't give a high reward a high performer a, a lot more than a low performer. That doesn't mean that. But you have to have then then you have to have the ability to articulate, you know, why that is fair. Now, in order to articulate why there is fair, KPIs and all that needs to be well defined, and However you want to do it, unless you're a computer, there's some level of subjectiveness to this. Minimizing that subjectiveness and being fair and being able to communicate about being fair um, is something that I would always like to practice. I mean, I don't do it 110%, but I try, I try to do it as much as I can. And it sounds like you hold yourself accountable to do it so that you, you remind yourself to, to yep. speak and, and it speaks the truth doesn't it so how people perceive think whatever it is that they're being given right or not yep. given and yep. people's truths are different so you have to manage that uh that properly you know right. it's it's a challenge i would assume every day and it is i i can see that every day with, with so many so many people and so many stakeholders that's really great advice by the way A lot of this is about philosophy and how to help others sort of uh, be successful like you have, right? And so, you know, what other th what other uh, advice would you give to uh, tech leaders, to just entrepreneurs who are making their way to that kind of 100, 500 million mark, right, out there who are, uh, you're, I know you're now a billion plus, it's just getting their way up, growing rapidly. And, you know, how would you, what would you tell them to be thinking and doing and, and, and um, how would you help that help mold them? That's a tough, that's, that's a tough one because it's different from industries. It's different from products. Um, I prefer to focus more on market share. Uh, and, so the question, you know, when we put down our plan and um, our, our annual operating plan, we call it AOP, which each of the operating unit um, is not about how much more revenue we're going to grow. Um, and we, we do ask that question. The most important fundamental question is, oh, there are two questions, but, 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 but the first question is, what is the what is our differentiation in that market that whatever the market that we're participating in. So that's, so I need to show up and people would say, okay, Blackberry is doing this in this market. 
you know they're all, they, they're they're serving that you know uh it's like a restaurant right we, 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 what are your best dishes right <laughs> so so th this is the way and anyway, why would people want to buy it so that's one thing the second thing is are you gaining market share or are you losing market share mm -hmm. right? and, and if the market is growing 20 percent and you have a plan to grow five well clearly that's a problem right um so and and the final thing I want to add to it because I, I deal with that a lot. Um, in fact, that was one case yesterday. Uh, you also have to have a consistent long term plan. I mean, we look at it three years, five years out. We don't look at it like next year because you you end up doing what what short term makes sense, but long term you pay for it. And and the, and and in order to in in order to have a good business or a good enterprise the sustainability is the most important thing it's not what is it today you know today i got some challenges today through acquisition through um covid pandemic and so forth we're, we're looking way beyond that i mean we we have to have a plan to say okay if i do this right three years from today i will see that and 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 i will so i know you asked for one thing but I, I gave you three. Um, I, I think you look at it long term. You look at your your value add to whatever you're doing, uh, and you look at it from a market share gain perspective rather than revenue. Because it, if if the market is a worthwhile market, your revenue will come because because you're gaining market share. And, and it's so it's such wise words because you're encouraging people to look at the signs and not just make reactive decisions, think into the future, be sustainable so that your decisions may have investment in the short term. You may have a loss in the short term, yet your gain will be much more in the long term. Right. And it's like investing. You invest, you can't just pull it out or shouldn't just pull it out and immediately. You, you see the longevity of the company mm -hmm. and of the stock itself and the decisions of great CEOs like you who understand sustainability and growth over a long period of time yeah sustainability is the most important because i could flip it in the other way let's say tomorrow i go to all my customers and say you need to only pay me once and you never need to pay me again and i will service you for the next 10 years and then so next year my revenue would just shot up and then it will, everybody would celebrate wow this is a great growth but then you know for the next nine year nine more years you got nothing <laughs> and so and the similar thing is people wants to be very profitable it's easy i go outside and tell my troops and say by the way take a month off without pay this quarter i will be so profitable you know they're like wow you know these guys generate a lot of cash you know there's all this stuff because i haven't paid people for a month mm -hmm. right. now unfortunately you can sustain that could you? I mean, you can't just say, well, never come back. And so that, so this is why a, a sensible plan will be one that is consistent and sustainable. And you're looking at the right metrics and 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 you make, you know, you chipped away, you know, you kind of get to that journey. Uh, and, and and anyway, so that's that's exactly what we just talked about. It's extraordinary. John, this has been great meeting you, learning from you. No. Today, you have so much to give and have been so generous with your wisdom today. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you.